This is Buster, one of the most successful racing airplanes of all time. It hangs in the Air and Space Museum, looking the way it did when it retired from competition in 1954. But in its original form, it was a product of the golden age of air racing, the work of designer and racing pilot Steve Whitman. I went to Oshkosh in 31, March of 31. And uh, in April, I started building the first racing airplane. And in the uh, end of August, I was at Cleveland Racing. Its original name was Chief Oshkosh. And back in 1931, it looked very right. different. I had to live and I liked hamburgers, you know, something to eat. <laughs> and uh, it, uh, they didn't pay a lot, but uh, in those days, a little was a lot. Steve Whitman's hero was Jimmy Doolittle. Whitman saw him in the 1920s testing a Curtis twisted slab propeller. The engineers were afraid the propeller would break at the hub in a dive. So his, he was assigned to take it on up and dive it straight down with somebody well, wide open and see whether it would stay together, and it didn't. And uh, when it went, it also took the terrific vibration, took the wings, and so he was up there riding a fuselage down at about terminal velocity. And so he had to get out. And uh, next day he was flying again. And I thought, boy, what a man. Well, of course, the, the big race was the National Air Race. The Henderson brothers put on quite a show. And it was, it was uh, a well run. tight, tight ship, as they say. Steve Whitman had firm ideas about the design of racing airplanes. I really kept it as light as I possibly could, uh, even though I knew I could get more efficiency. Otherwise, I want to keep it light so that I get the first pylon first, and therefore it's a lot safer. And if you have a lead, you have a few miles an hour advantage. Of course, just try and get by somebody, you've got to have a couple miles an hour to do it. Whitman had extraordinary success with Chief Oshkosh in class racing all around America throughout the 1930s. By 1936, he'd reduced its wingspan to 13 feet. Whitman had to crash land the Chief at the Oakland races in 1938, and it didn't compete again until 1947, when it re-emerged with a new name, flying in midget class races with great success until it retired in 1954.